session of the actually our work session of the york county school board to order mrs haywood couldn't be with us this evening she's traveling with family and so we wish her safe returns after her little time away with the grandkids and and such um we have multiple presentations this evening um that we're going to present to our community and present to us as a board so we'll go ahead and get started uh, dr shandor you want to take us off with the uh, first one for human resources absolutely thank you mr medford good evening board members um this evening dr carroll dr jim carroll is going to start us off with an update pertaining to division personnel dr carroll thank you dr shandor uh, chairman medford members of the board just a quick uh, update on our summer hiring to date uh, first of all, I want to hold up my team that's been doing a great job processing uh, hires that we've made to date and the principals and hiring managers that have been working diligently there and, uh, you know, towards our goal of having everybody in place, especially teachers, that first day of school. So first of all, I want to draw the picture for you. It's not a static situation where we know every opening, you know, at the beginning of the, of the summer. So what I'm reporting out to you starts with from the earliest intent forms from teachers who knew they were going to retire or not return to the division early on around February or March uh, through through last Friday. That's when this report entails. So you have a rolling kind of process to this. But to date, we've had 72 licensed and 40 non-licensed openings from the division. And so when you look at the fact that we have over 800 teachers, that's less than 10% uh, attrition. So that looks good. Um, and so, uh, so total 112 positions and as of friday we have 50 openings still to fill so we're getting close as we get uh, closer to september so first of all when you uh, look at the sheet that's on the screen you look at the top half of the sheet uh, we have uh, we had 43 uh, resignations 36 of those teachers this is the the license at the top of the sheet and one of those teachers was actually promoted to an admin position in another division and six other licensed position and seven administrators who left and uh, good for them but bad for the division is that five of them received promotions outside of the division so uh, certainly uh, showing that our people are strong and being sought after in other divisions and then 29 of those uh, <laughs> licensed were teach uh, 29 retirements 26 of those teachers two other licensed and one administrator <clears throat> of those positions 12 current teacher openings still remain and i just listed the top two <coughs> as far as uh, uh, content area secondary math we have three openings and we have advertised that extensively and been using social media to try to help help the principals in finding qualified applicants to fill those spots in two secondary english and i believe at this point right now all all elementary and all special ed are filled um, and then other things just to hold up there is that uh, uh, other promotions that happened were two teachers uh, were promoted within the division to fill four of the open AP uh, positions and then we've had th uh, three principal positions so far and all three were filled with internal applicants from our AP pool and we've had two rehires that were former YCSD employees that are now in administrative positions then moving to the non-licensed area where we have 36 openings still and you're going to see a lag there, especially with those non-licensed positions that are under uh, school sites. Uh, principals are in a, you know, they're in a competitive pool to get those teachers hired first because we have deadlines in the state to try to try to. Uh, if you're looking for experienced teachers from other divisions, and as those deadlines went past on July 15th, you see a shift from hiring teachers to hiring non-licensed positions. And we had a total of 40 non-licensed uh, resignations and retirements, breaking down 27 resignations and 13 retirements. Under the non-licensed resignations, you see 10 of them were paraeducators, five were bus drivers, and we do still have six open bus driver positions open, and five custodians, and you can see them on down. And then 13 in the retirements, and you see that breakout. And then once again, I wanted to highlight that three pair i'm really excited about this three para educators were actually promoted from para to a teaching position which i think that's great and then also that we had eight other moves within the, the division people in a non-licensed position moving into a higher ranked uh, non-licensed position and that concludes my report and i'll take any questions you may have 
Thank you. Any questions? Dr. Carroll, you said you have three secondary math positions that are open right now. Um, how difficult is it to find a qualified math instructor? I know um, that's always a place where I hear parents complain at the secondary level because they're having to pay for tutors to teach their children math. Now we have three openings, school starts in less than a month. What's the situation like? Your most difficult situation is math and special education. So the earlier you can fill that, of course, the better it is. Um, but our people keep looking, and as I say, we're, we're, we're advertising as far away as Pennsylvania and trying to find somebody who might be uh, qualified. Um, applaud our principals who are waiting to find somebody who can absolutely fill that position and be qualified. Um, but being in the kind of community we're in, you never know when somebody may drop in last minute. Some of the best hires I've ever made are in August. And uh, I actually talked to somebody today that was special ed qualified and um, a reading specialist who ju just put in their application today. So while difficult, it can still happen. Are you worried that it's August and we may have to increase the math class size if we don't hire this teacher at the high school level? Or? Uh, worried, no. Concerned, yes. Okay. <laughs> because you just don't know what can happen. Thank you. Other questions? All right, thank you very much. Um, I, I'm looking at the bus drivers. I mean, that was a question I had thinking, oh, goodness, every year we start, you don't have enough bus drivers, and the, and the first round of buses are showing up late because double runs. Mm -hmm. We're in good shape. Yeah, actually, we, I, I asked uh, Mary Giles today, and she said this is better than we were last year on bus drivers, so uh, cautiously optimistic there. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, our next presentation is construction report, and uh, Dr. Shandor, we added this to give us an update. There's so much stuff going on right now. So. Yes. Um, Mr. Shearhart, uh, Mr. Shearhart, our Associate Director of Capital Plans and Projects, is now going to share a report relating to summer construction projects. Mr. Shearhart. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Shandor, here's a, a brief uh, report for the uh, capital projects right now. <clears throat> the first of these I'd like to touch on is uh, the Grafton High School, Middle School track resurfacing. As you know, we appropriated money in the CIP to resurface this track. We had to repair the track, the asphalt track first, and fix some of the drainage there, drainage issues, and then we've re resurfaced the track now. This is what it looks like with the rubber down, it's lined and everything is ready to go. So it's beautiful, ready to go. The next one is Tab High School. That was a, uh, Greg Dolak uh, went over that project, and this is another Greg Dolak project here. He's, he oversaw both of these here. This again, they had to repair the asphalt track and drainage there, and you see they got the rubber down, and the, uh, it's, it's ready to go too as well. So there's another, next project here is another Greg Dolak project, overseeing the replacement of the kitchen equipment in some of the schools. And uh, this is the Grafton complex. They changed out some of the equipment there. It was, from the beginning of the school, 96, so it was had some wear, significant wear on it. It's been replaced. The next project is the project that I'm taking care of. It's the Grafton Bethel Elementary School, and it's replacing the uh, some of the uh, casework in the classrooms there, re renovating the class the restrooms, and doing some painting inside, and also replacing some of the classroom doors. So uh, it's a little bit of work going on in there. It's what the bathrooms used to look like <laughs> after we started demoing in there. Go ahead. And then here's the contractor, the contractors installing new plumbing, and this is what it looks like about like today. Uh, they don't have the partitions installed and things like that, but you can see things are going on. Go this is the casework in one of the classrooms. There's, uh, we're replacing the base casework in the classrooms, new sinks and things like that, painting all the classrooms, up, up, updating the school a lot. It looks a lot better. The next project is Grafton High School Middle School. This is partial roof replacement there. Is that we're improving roof drainage there. <clears throat> we're raising the roof parapet, which is the wall at the very edge of the roof, and we're raising raising the roof up to cause it to drain better. It affects the entrances and also the flying beams at the entrances. You can see this is what Grafton Middle School used to look like, the entrance. This is what it looks like now. The flying beam that went across there, you can see right now we took all the brick off that. That brick was becoming saturated when it rained and it became very heavy, so we took that all off. That's all now steel framing inside there, and it's going to get a, uh, a metal, blue metal layer over the top of this uh, 
ice and water shield that's there now. And you see above the, the uh, tower there on the left-hand side there, there's a little peak on top of that now. That will have a metal roof on top of there. That it's, it's also going to be blue. So it'll look very nice when they get it done. The little canopy above the doors uh, also needs a new roof there. That will be done. The contract is working very hard to get done with the front of the building so we can be ready for new students registering and things like that. So they're, they're focusing on the front of the building now, then they'll move to the back. So this is Grafton Middle School. This is the roof of Grafton Middle School. You can see here where they took off about 10 feet of the roof and put a lot more slope into the roof right at the edge of the roof to cause the water to run to the drains better. Next. This is Grafton High School. It's in the same condition as the Grafton Middle School entrance. You can see here we're putting the the flying beam and the, the peak on the little roof there for the metal roof. This is the roof of the high school. So you can see along the front side of the school on both sides, the high school and middle school side, the roof is roof work has mostly been done there. They have to come back and put some metal caps in, some gutters and downspouts and things like that. But that area of the roof should be dried in. We should not have any more rain coming into the building. Magruder Elementary School is another project. It's going very well. In the main building, we're placing the heating and air conditioning, lighting and painting, gymnasium, we're placing the roof, HVAC, heating and air conditioning. I know Mrs. Bay Haywood would love to see that one, uh, and also enclosing the breezeway. And the main offices, that we're doing the security vestibule. This is a sketch of what the building is taking, how it's taking place in the building, the phases, phase one, two, three, four. Right now, phase two is actually ahead of schedule. They stripped and waxed the floors in phase two right now. They'll be doing stripping and waxing the floors in phase three this week and hopefully moving furniture into those two wings this weekend, if not before. This is the entrance of, of uh, Magruder. There initially was not a window in that wall. This is a wall of the office. Now that the, the uh, staff will be able to look right out in front of the building and see who's coming into the building without having to look through a security camera. This is the main office. Mm. It's not quite ready for business. <laughs> Next slide. This is what it looks like now. They're going to enclose that wall there, put a window wall, what they call a window wall there. It's going to be glass and metal. And now the staff will be able to sit behind the counter there and look directly out into the lobby and see what's going on in the lobby. The wood framing there is where, they, where the new counter will be. This is the cafeteria. It's not open for business either. And uh, they're moving along very well here. They've got the duct work and things installed, so they're moving, moving very well. There is, here they are installing the new heating and air conditioning units on the roof. Here they're all installed. That was fast. And then here's the uh, coupe de gras here for Magruder. These the uh, air conditioning duct work in the gymnasium. And here's an air conditioning unit on the roof, so it's actually there. And that's the new roof on the gym. So this last weekend, when everybody was at home, this is what the custodians were doing. You see, they've got the floor, the classrooms on the 100 hall are cleaned. You can see the floors there look like look like they're wet, but it's dry. That's how great they look. Next one. And this is the hallway there. All new, pa painted <laughs> the walls, painted the door frames. It, just, it looks great. It looks fantastic. It's all clean and ready to go. Waller Mill Elementary School. This is our next project here. Uh, the bids are due this Thursday. Uh, we anticipate the construction actually beginning in September. And uh, the renovation of the existing building to start next September. The schedule completion is now December of 2016. Previously, I told you it was probably going to be the spring of 2017, but we think that the contractor can get it all done by the beginning of December. So that looks pretty good. We're relocating one trailer to Yorktown Elementary from the school to get it out of the construction site and also to really alleviate some of the crowding at Yorktown Elementary. That's my last slide. Do you have any questions? So everything is on time. Everything looks very well and on time. We should reach substantial completion on all, all the projects on time. And when, I walk, when I walked into Grafton Bethel that one day and you showed me around and, and mounds of gravel in the hallways, it just, oh my golly day, I'm thinking, okay, they got to manually remove every bit of that because there's no way to get it into the building. Um, but then to see the, as, as they're progressing along, it's a lot of hard work being done. What will go in the trailer that's relocating to Yorktown Elementary? It will be set up for classrooms, and we anticipate having those. I do not know exact the moving date yet, but we have a uh, permit from the county to go ahead and put the trailers at York Elementary, the one from the one from Seaford and the one from Wallamel to go to York Elementary. They'll be put on the tennis court. Yes, sir. Mr. Shearhart, are we still using the type air conditioning units that were put in Grafton Bethel and all the other schools, the individual room? Yes, sir. They, they high, high efficiency uh, VRF variable refrigerant 
Variable yeah. refrigerant, yes, they're, they're track with yes, sir. Thank They've been working great. Where are we with, um, I know we, we keep adding capacity to Yorktown, actually, you know, with, the, with now the two trailers to Yorktown Elementary School, so we're, we're really reaching the capacity there. The cafeteria, I know we had some discussions about that cafeteria has never been enlarged. It's 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 as difficult to get that many children through there. Um, where are we at on that? We anticipate that the RFP for A and E on that project to go out this week. So construction would begin next summer is when we would project it to be. Yes, sir. Any other I, questions? I have one yes. question for Mark. Mark, the um, the tracks that you put in, how long and how long do those all weather tracks last? And, and, and so that's one question. The other one is maintenance. There is, there is some maintenance on, on the tracks. They have to be cleaned and things like that. Uh, I can't tell you the exact time. I think it's 10 years for the tra how long the tracks will last. last. They, can, they can be recoded again. They don't have to be ground down. What we did there was we went from bare asphalt to rubberizing. We can treat the rubber now. And it looks good. Yeah, it looks really good. It's great to run on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Shearhart, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, our next item of present for a presentation is our strategic plan update on uh, YCSD's secondary literacy model. This is exciting. We can't wait to hear the details. Dr. Shandor? Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Medford. Dr. Vika Stevenson, an instructional specialist for secondary English and social studies, uh, began working with the secondary administrators and reading specialists and English teachers last year to develop the secondary literacy model. Tonight, she's going to provide you with an overview of this model, as well as its development and plans for implementation. Dr. Stevens. Thank you, Dr. Shandor. Good evening, Chairman Medford and members of the board. This evening, I will provide a strategic plan update on the York County School Division secondary literacy model, and I will discuss implications for our work in FY16. Goal one of the YCSD five-year strategic plan states that students will consistently demonstrate growth and excellence in the skills and knowledge needed to be productive citizens. One of the objectives under this goal is the development of a YCSD literacy model. The first part of this objective states that staff will evaluate the current elementary reading model, the K-12 writing model, to develop an integrated K-5 literacy model by June 2014. The K-5 Literacy Model Committee met the first part of this goal with the creation of the K-5 Literacy Model, which is currently being implemented in elementary schools across the division. The second part of this objective states that a literacy model that integrates reading and writing at the secondary level is to be developed by June 2015. So using the K-5 literacy model, the K-12 writing model, and the middle school literacy model that was implemented in 2013, the secondary liter literacy leadership team and the secondary literacy model committee has developed an integrated secondary literacy model for grades 6 through 12. Upon completion, the new YCSD secondary literacy model will replace the secondary portion of the YCSD K-12 writing model and the existing middle school literacy model. Following the completion of the K-5 literacy model in June 2014, the Secondary Literacy Leadership Team, or LLT, consisting of the Chief Academic Officer, Directors, Instructional Specialists, Building Level Administrators, Reading Specialists, and Teachers met in August of 2014 to begin researching the current trends and best practices in the field of literacy instruction. Seventeen teacher representatives from each secondary school met in the fall of 2014 to begin the work of the Secondary Literacy Model Committee, or LMC. Together, the LLT and LMC reviewed the current literacy models and completed a book study of raising reading achievement in middle and high schools, Five Simple to Follow Strategies by Elaine McEwan, and a host of other article studies. The LMC also used the feedback received from the parent focus groups in the development of the secondary literacy model. As a part of the development of the secondary literacy model, the chief academic officer, director of secondary instruction, and I met with parent focus groups at each of the secondary schools in the fall of 2014. We instructed principals to invite parents who represented students from a variety of backgrounds to include a representative from GAP Group 1 or a student with disability, an English language learner, and an economically disadvantaged student, a high achieving student or gifted, a PTA leadership, 
and a parent who had a child who had already matriculated through school and is well into high school or college. And during these meetings, the parents provided feedback regarding areas of excellence and areas for growth in reading, writing, research, oral communication, and overall preparedness. The information that we gleaned from these focus groups provided additional insight for the development of the YCSD secondary literacy model. The feedback that was recorded presented trends of excellence in summer reading assignments, sustained silent reading, extend and MSAM, the use of technology for engagement, and overall preparedness. Although summer reading was identified as a trend of excellence in all focus groups because it provides students in advanced courses valuable opportunities to engage with text during the summer, it was also recognized for, as a trend of growth as parents discussed several aspects of summer reading that could be addressed in order to better support students. And I'll share more with you about that momentarily. Parents at all four middle schools identified that silent sustained reading or sustained silent reading was beneficial to students and promoted a literacy rich environment that encourages student choice in reading. In five of nine of the focus groups, parents stated that their children who had participated in the EXTEND and MSAM programs were better prepared for high school and were provided unique opportunities to engage in reading, writing, research, and communication across the content areas. Eight of nine focus groups stated that YCSD excels in using technology to engage students in learning across the content areas. And all of the focus groups stated that students who had matriculated through middle and high school were prepared for the next level of education. Additionally, the parents also shared with us that the York County School Division is the reason they moved to this county and that the education that their students receive here is unparalleled. So we have something to be proud of. There were eight overall trends for growth in literacy instruction at the secondary level, and I'll share just a few of these details um, or for the areas of growth. So with regard to summer reading, as I mentioned previously, summer reading was identified as both an area of excellence and an area for growth. Five of nine focus groups stated that the required summer reading program could be better improved by providing middle school students more explicit instruction on the use of annotation. Parents also stated that the handouts lack clarity and that this level led to a level of frustra frustration during the long summer months. Additionally, parents stated that many of the texts that are included on this required summer reading list were gender biased and they lacked appeal to our male students. So in an effort to address these parent concerns and not wait, we have already taken steps toward improving the required summer reading program. This year, I worked hand in hand with middle school teachers by providing a sample lesson plan with instructional resources geared toward providing rising ninth graders explicit instruction on annotating and analyzing text. The curriculum guides for English grades six through eight have been updated to include annotation and other reading strategies as an area of focus. Additionally, all of the middle and high school handouts were updated to include clear directives as well as summer contact information for our students who need additional support throughout the summer. We also collaborated with the educational technology facilitators and students across the division to create a YCSD summer reading website that includes instructional videos on annotation. And in FY16, I will continue working with teachers across the division to review the titles that are included on the summer reading list so that we can allow for student choice and include approved books that appeal to both our male and female readers. With regard to strategic reading instruction, parent focus groups stated that at the secondary level, our students could benefit from more explicit instruction on the use of reading strategies across the content areas. Parents also expressed that their students could benefit from more textbook-based reading and explicit instruction on the use of text features. They believe that these experiences will better prepare students to meet the demands of academic reading at the post-secondary level. Feedback on writing was another major area of concern for our parents. Seven of nine focus groups expressed concern regarding the depth of feedback that their students received on writing. Parents also expressed that they would like to see more evidence of writing and feedback coming home and that their students needed more explicit instruction on basic standards of convention to include grammar usage and mechanics. So using all of this information that we gleaned from our research and from the parent focus groups, um, the LLT and LMC worked collaboratively to begin developing our guiding belief. The philosophy then guided the work of the committee as we developed our belief statements and as we continued to craft the content of the model. 
Our philosophy of literacy instruction states that teachers across the content areas must emphasize literacy practices that are specific to their content areas so that our students are encouraged to read, write, research, and communicate in the manner of historians, scientists, mathematicians, and other subject area experts. This guiding philosophy will drive the course of implementation in FY16 as a secondary literacy leadership team and the literacy model committee will include teacher representatives from all content areas and they will participate in building a common understanding of literacy instruction across the division. The LLT and LMC worked collaboratively to review the belief statements presented in the K-5 and middle school literacy models in order to streamline those of the secondary literacy model. The guiding philosophy then drove the revision of these belief statements, and as outlined in our belief statements, we believe a literacy-rich environment fosters student engagement across the disciplines. We believe the skills of reading, writing, speaking, and listening and researching are interconnected and essential to balance literacy. We believe that literacy instruction is the responsibility of all teachers. And we believe that as students work toward literacy goals, they deserve differentiated support. We also believe that authentic literacy assessments create opportunities to drive instruction, monitor student progress, and provide feedback. And finally, we believe that students have increased opportunities to develop literacy skills when teachers, regardless of their content specialty, receive ongoing professional development. So the secondary literacy model is divided into nine sections, the first of those being the literacy overview. This section includes the historical background of the secondary literacy model, including our belief statements, our guiding philosophy, and our guidelines and expectations. It also includes research that supports literacy instruction across the disciplines. The next section, curriculum, instruction, and assessment, offers teachers guidelines for proper alignment. And this section also includes a required assessment schedule for both middle and high school English teachers, and it includes the use of on track to measure student growth over time. The next several session, sections, rather, strategic reading, writing, vocabulary, research, and oral communication include research-based best practices as well as guidelines and expectations for instruction. Additionally, each of these sections includes instructional resources that teachers should refer to as they refine their focus on liter literacy instruction and plan for learning experiences. So beginning with the strategic reading section, I'd like to share a few highlights from each section with you. So for strategic reading, in order to develop strategic reading in YCSD, we encourage teachers of all content areas to provide students frequent and meaningful opportunities to develop their reading skills. It's the obligation of all teachers to offer differentiated, explicit, and supportive reading instruction so that students can become independent, lifelong learners who possess the ability to adjust their reading to the purpose required of them by each text. The strategic reading section of the model defines strategic reading or reading to learn and strategic reading instruction. The section also outlines strategies used by strategic readers and traits of strategic readers, or teachers rather. The strategic reading section also provides best practices for building comprehension and higher level thinking skills. The writing section of the model includes an updated YCSD writing process for the secondary level. This process is grounded on the belief that writing is a cyclical process which involves reflection and feedback. This section also provides best practices for grammar instruction, including expectations for the use of writing portfolios to track student progress over time, and it includes guidelines for the assessment of writing and guidelines for providing students feedback. Additionally, this section also includes an updated YCSD secondary writing rubric and checklist. The vocabulary section places an emphasis on explicit daily vocabulary instruction in all content areas, and it includes best practices for ongoing active engagement with words through reading, writing, and oral communication. The section also defines tiered vocabulary instruction, which separates tier one vocabulary, vocabulary or our everyday words, the tier two vocabulary, our academic words, and our tier three vocabulary, which is words that are specific to a particular content area. 
The next section, the research section, um, provides strategies for developing information literacy skills in all content areas. The section places an emphasis on explicit instruction on the use of academic formatting and style guides, and it provides best practices for voice and choice, avoiding plagiarism, note-taking and annota annotating, and the assessment of research. The final section of the model, oral language and communication, is grounded on the belief that the development of core competencies are necessary for all learners, and the goal for all secondary students is to successfully use oral communication as an interdisciplinary skill. This section defines media literacy and emphasizes the appropriate use of language to convey messages to an audience. So using a tiered approach, we will begin implementing the secondary literacy model this fall. In August, both middle and high school English teachers will attend division-wide professional development to begin learning more about the secondary literacy model and the guidelines and expectations set forth. The focus of the PD in year one with English teachers will be strategic reading and writing, and during professional development, our teachers will have an opportunity to share their professional knowledge and learn more about the best practices surrounding adolescent literacy instruction. During this school year, the secondary literacy leadership team will invite teachers from across the content areas to serve on the secondary literacy model committee. Together, the committee will work toward building a common understanding of the role of literacy instruction across the content areas. We will utilize secondary instructional trainers who will participate by implementing professional development at the building level to teachers across the content areas as they continue to learn about the model and best practices for improving students' academic success through literacy instruction. The secondary instructional trainers will begin meeting this fall to plan and develop professional development modules, which will be administered at all of the secondary schools. Additionally, we will begin collecting feedback from teachers and students this year, and we will use that feedback that we receive in order to determine the next steps for implementation in years two and three. So on behalf of the secondary literacy leadership team and the secondary literacy model committee, I thank you for allowing me the opportunity to share the very new York County School Division Secondary Literacy Model. We are confident that this model will support teachers in providing instruction that engages all students in acquiring the skills and knowledge needed to make productive contributions to the world. Thank you. And at this time, I welcome your questions. Wow, I wrote it right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, this fantastic presentation. Thank you. Um, this is, I mean, we're, we're getting back to work now as a board after uh, July is our downtime. And to come, I can speak, and coming back in August now and starting to gear back up for the, the kiddos that are going to show up on our front doorsteps of our YCSD here soon. Um, the, the work, oh my gosh, the team's work into this. I mean, you, you presented a lot of work that people have done to um, get ready for the kids coming in and a lot, taking the school board's goal and objectives and, and bringing it to life like this into a program that the results are just going to be fantastic. I mean, that's, that's the part where you just sit back and wait for it because it's, it's going to be awesome. Um, it's, 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 what we, it's what we've wanted. I mean, this awesome. Is good. I've been looking forward to hearing about the secondary literacy model all year because as Dr. Guy knows, I'll get on my soapbox yeah. here when it comes to wanting uh, an improved literacy program in YCSD. Um, what would you say is the biggest change coming in the literacy model? I would say the biggest change is, is having this cross-curricular, cross-the-content area focus on literacy instruction. So many times when we hear the word literacy, we automatically think reading and writing, language arts class. But l reading and writing are skills that are employed in all content areas. So the biggest change is really going to be getting our content area teachers on board and focusing on their role as it pertains to literacy instruction across the content areas. I'm so excited to hear about um, the focus groups with the families and listening to them about the summer assignments, uh, about receiving more feedback from teachers on how to improve writing skills. I think that's very much going to help our students. Now, um, what about student choice in the summer reading? 
I'm glad you asked that question. I was just having this conversation earlier today. In our belief statements, we say that a literacy-rich environment fosters student engagement across the discipline. So if we're going to honor what we said as our guiding philosophy and our belief statement, we absolutely have to provide all students, whether they're in advanced courses or regular courses, an opportunity to engage in reading over the summer and provide the students with choice. So one of the conversations that we're going to have with English teachers when we get back this fall is the goal of summer reading is just to engage students in, in reading and we pro want them to continue to progress as strategic readers but we also want to make sure that we give them choice because if we can engage them with a text that they've chosen how much more powerful is that so that's the conversation that we're having this year so I would bet on a thousand that we are going to have some changes with that next summer a couple more questions sure absolutely um, as far as what are, what are the teachers saying are they excited about this? Are they nervous about this? What's what's the reaction? My teachers are nervous, I will be honest. They're nervous just because at the secondary level we've not had anything like this before, so they are just a little bit nervous. Um, but what we have in place for them this fall when they return is going to be very supportive of them, just to let them know that we're really just refining our focus on literacy instruction and what we know is just good instruction. So we're just going to refine that focus and just kind of support them through the process so that whatever nervousness they will not have that as we continue to progress through the school year. And, and Dr. Stevenson, you're also using the expertise that we have within the division as well, where we have some of our um, teachers at different buildings that are providing. Um, Absolutely. Uh, in August, when the teachers come, English teachers come for pull out, the way that I've structured that session, uh, we'll have a general session where we'll provide them some overview of the model and kind of celebrate the work that's been done. But we also have some concurrent sessions that will be run by teachers within the division who have demonstrated excellence in the classroom with providing students meaningful feedback on writing, maximizing independent choice in their reading that their students do in the classroom. Um, we've even got someone that's coming in from William and Mary Cern doing a session specifically tailored to our teachers and our literacy model on using media to teach strategic reading strategies. So it is going to be a phenomenal experience for our, for our teachers. That sounds great. And my final question yes. is one thing that I've always questioned is what, they, what communication is going on between elementary, middle school, and high school so that when the kids enter sixth grade, they're ready to hit the ground running. When our kids enter ninth grade, they're ready to hit the ground running. And they're not over the summer with their reading assignment questioning how do I annotate this book <laughs> so what's being done with that but one of the first things that I did last year was try to streamline the departmental chairs and, and the work that I do with them but I know that this this coming school year our literacy leadership teams at some point are going to merge so we'll have a k-12 literacy leadership team and that is how we're going to make sure that the alignment is there with with our k-12 literacy program Great. so I'm excited about that this sounds wonderful good job thank you mr. mentor yes uh, what steps will you be taking to measure the success of the literacy model? Right. What is the timeline? Right. So we're going to continue to evaluate throughout this process. So the first measure that we're going to put in place, just to kind of make sure that our professional development goals are in line, uh, we're going to be doing a teacher and student literacy survey this fall and using that to guide our work. But throughout the process, we're going to evaluate the program simply with our walkthrough tools that we're going to create for administrators, uh, with the feedback that we receive from parents, teachers, and students. Um, and we're going to kind of measure that with our success in the areas that we specifically want to focus on in years one and two with strategic reading and writing. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. So how often will that be done, these, these just some of the measures? trying to measure the success here and some of the this, this steps. How often do you envision that? Well, right now we have a three-year tiered approach and we're going to continue to evaluate each year because there are going to be things in year one that we're going to have to refine and then we're going to have to go back and redo. So I, I what, I, what I didn't share was that our, the literacy model is going to be updated this school year to include best practices for our teachers in the other content areas. So this is a process that's still ongoing. So even though we've developed this first version, we're going to continue to accept that feedback back um, and the best practices and continue to update our model so that it's even better than it is right now. Catching things in year one is easier than letting them go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, year absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Just one follow-up question, I guess, and I, I love the fact that um, Ms. Kursky mentioned it, that you brought in your focal, your focus groups and they were made up of, you know, all the way across the spectrum of our school division and the diversity there. Yeah. Um, with our students that are challenged 
our students that uh, struggle, our students in our special ed uh, population, what are we going to do or what, what is the plan for resources? I mean, even to the paraeducator that's in the classroom helping the teacher, helping the student during the summer when the student's not in the building, but you know, what are some things being done? The well, same, different? Yeah, well, one of the things that we did differently, and Dr. Pennycuff can support me on that, um, this past spring we we acquired the level literacy for the secondary teachers. And our special education teachers at the secondary level will all train for level literacy, and they're gonna begin implementing that. So that is gonna really speak to our tier three students this year and providing them that targeted intervention that's necessary to get them on track to where they are with their literacy goals. So we're very excited to have that as a part of our program. And will some of the professional development pieces be um, including our paraeducators? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Excellent. All right. Thank you very Thank much. You very Thank, much. You. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Stevens. I want to applaud that presentation. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's what we're going for. Exactly. That was good. Um, our next is our strategic plan update for transformative learning. So, Dr. Shandor. Thank you. Candy Skinner, our Director of Elementary Instruction, is now going to provide an update this evening on the division's progress towards meeting the transformative learning objective under goal two of the strategic plan. Skinner. Thank you. Um, good evening, Chairman Medford, members of the board, Dr. Shandor, and members of Cabinet. As Dr. Shandor shared, I will be providing you with an update on the work our school division has been doing in the area of transformative learning. As you may recall, back in May, the school division made the decision to modify the strategic plan based on the feedback from teachers and staff. Tonight, I'm excited to share the work our teachers and staff are doing to meet this learning target which is part of goal two of the York County Strategic Plan. So last year we uh, had 287 teachers attend PBL 101 training. And PBL, as you may know, stands for project-based learning. And that's where students learn the content of the curriculum through a project that includes research, writing, public audience, and voice and choice. It's a three-day training that teachers attend, and at the end of that training, the teachers create a project idea that they begin to implement and then refine throughout the school year. So I'd like to share with you just a, a quick uh, little fun picture of some of our teachers going through some of the training. And during these trainings, they work collaboratively to create projects, and they have a little fun too during that time. Um, but again, they're supporting each other in a collaborative environment as they develop those projects. Over the past three years, the Buck Institute has been providing us with a training for PBL. Um, we're excited to share that we now have a cohort of six trainers in York County School Division that we call our capacity builders, and they will now be serving as our PBL trainers in our school division. And this year, our capacity builders will offer optional training for teachers who would like to learn about PBL. In addition, recently, York County School Division received a grant from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration for developing a project-based environmental literacy program, which we're very excited about. As part of this grant, we are going to begin training teachers in grades six and seven science, earth science, and biology. And we currently have 15 teachers signed up for this training, and it begins tomorrow. So we're excited about that. Um, last year, we also had 68 teachers attend discovery education training and that is part of, we call it DE, that's our DE cohort. Um, this is a three-year partnership that we have with Discovery Education, where teachers use their board builder system to work with students to create original video content. And that's where the students will learn the content through the curriculum, but they also create videos to accompany that. As part of the cohort, teachers receive a set of eight iPads to use in their classroom, which they really enjoy having those. And last year, or last winter, as you know, the weather wasn't very cooperative with us. And um, our last two sessions for Discovery Education cohort had to be canceled. And so we did make that conscientious, conscientious decision at that time to not reschedule those in the spring, and we will be finishing those sessions this fall with that cohort of teachers. So to illustrate this, I'd like to share with you a video that was created by students in Ms. Schaefer's first grade classroom at Waller Mill Elementary School. And these students taught various math concepts through the creation of videos using the DE Board Builder site. Have you mastered addition? Can you solve some story problems? Let's go find some addition stories. Come on, you can come with us.
climbed the net. Then two girls climbed the net. How many children climbed the net all together? When you see the word all together, you know you need to add. So our math sentence is 3 plus 2 equals. Three brave boys climb the net. There they are at the very top. Then two strong girls climb the net. There they are at the very top. One, two, three, four, five. That's five friends at the top of the net. So again, that's just an example of some of the uh, videos that our students have created and uploaded to our Discovery Education Board Builder site. All right, continuing on, last year many of our students um, excuse me, many of our schools celebrated the work of our students through school exhibitions and these programs were held at various times during the school year and provided an opportunity for our students to showcase their research and action within the school and the local community. Tonight I'd like to highlight a few of these projects for you and the activities that they've done and some of these uh, you may be familiar with because some of these have been showcased in some of our student exhibitions. The first one that I'd like to share is uh, at Grafton Middle School. So students at Grafton Middle School um, in Mr. Bob Neely's sixth grade math class expanded on their recently learned math skills to identify an area of interest that would help support student academic growth in the school. The topics that they researched included the addition of a study hall, adding additional stairways to relieve overcrowding in the halls, redesigning the math office, and many other topics. Using these math skills, the students researched they collected data, they developed presentations for teachers, building and school board administrators, support staff, and even a school board member uh, came and, and watched their presentations. Okay, at Tab High School, students in Ms. Harris's Advanced English 9 class participated in persuasive presentations modeled after the popular show Shark Tank, if you're familiar with that show. Students worked in groups to create research-based persuasive arguments in which they presented to a group of their peers, or as they called them, sharks, in hopes of getting them to buy into their idea or product. These sharks provided feedback to each group on why or why not they would be willing to support their idea or product. This project encouraged a high level of class engagement and teamwork as the students researched, they presented, and they provided feedback to the groups. Another uh, project I'd like to highlight is at Seaford Elementary School. Students in grades one, two, and three planned and implemented a transformative learning project called Little Libraries this year. The purpose of this project was to provide a mini library and locations in the community for people to share the love of reading. First graders wrote original stories that went into the libraries. Second grade students read books and wrote short reviews to include within the books. Third grade students designed and built creative library cabinets to hold the library materials. And then a Seaford parent who is also a cabinet maker um, came and helped the students draw up their blueprints for their library cabinet designs. And you can see there that's the beginning of one of the, the ones that they were working on there. Uh, materials were donated by Kempsville Building Supply, Wayne Harbin Builders, Design Tech Incorporated, and our Seaford PTA. We had students from our career in tech um, program at New Horizons Regional Educational Center that actually came and helped the students cut out the materials and help them also paint and assemble them. And I happened to be there that day and it was just wonderful to see all of our students helping our younger students. These little libraries have been placed at four locations in the county including Seaford Elementary School, uh, neighborhood of Somerville which is in the Seaford zone, Ben and Jerry's on Water Street, and then our own York County School Board office has one as well. 
With the literacy models inside, Seifer's Little Libraries will offer free reading materials to children around our county. And um, when you have a moment, if you look at this, there's other, um, if you kept scrolling through, there's other projects also throughout the school division that we've highlighted in here. Okay, so the next um, thing that I'd like to talk to you about is our repository. During the past few years, this board has attended many of our student exhibitions where we have seen our students' projects presented. And during this time, the board has encouraged us to think of ways to harness the work of our teachers by sharing the projects. And so tonight I'm excited to share that our school division has created a repository for pro of projects for our students, excuse me, for our teachers to share their work. Um, this picture shows an example of a page from our secondary English site where we are currently reviewing and storing some of these projects. We're in the process of developing other um, subject area and content areas as well. Our schools have also seen the importance of sharing the work of our teachers and have implemented ways in which to share amongst their own staff. In our schools, teachers are provided time to collaborate and plan for common projects, which is important, as well as reflect on their work of their peers. Schools will also know the importance of sharing their work with the community. Our schools often invite in parents and community members to see student projects and also to serve as real world experts as our students um, share their projects or just want feedback while they're in the middle of a project. And finally, many of our schools are using media outlets as I shared just a minute ago using Twitter, uh, Facebook, our local news organizations, and also their own school webpage to share the work that their students are doing with their local community, which we know is very important. So in closing this evening, I'd like to share with you a year-long PBL project entitled All is Relative. This is um, done by students in Madame Perry's French II class at Yorktown Middle School uh, this past year. Through this year-long project, the students researched the extent, involvement, extent and involvement of the French in the Revolutionary War at the Battle of Yorktown, um, and their attempts was to communicate the French point of view. So in teams, they researched a key player from the Battle of Yorktown. They wrote reports and created an exhibit for display at the Yorktown Victory Center Museum. Students presented their findings to YMS teachers and the museum's educational program manager for feedback before presenting in French and in English to a large audience in the museum. The museum's educational program manager was very impressed with the quality of our students' work. And as you'll hear from one of our students, the experience was equally fulfilling for them. We chose George Washington because, you know, he was the general and he did play a major role in this because, you know, without a bunch of these leaders, we wouldn't have been able to communicate. Like Benjamin Franklin went over water to talk to them and, you know, they just, he just won their hearts over. Really cool. And what kinds of things did you have to do to prepare for your exhibit? Well, we had to do a lot of things that I know I have never really done before. We had to get together out of school, and these people, the people in my group, they haven't like, we weren't like really close friends before, but it was amazing because we went out of school to the library and did research, and we had to print things off and look in books and stuff. And it was just really cool because I've never done that before, and it really taught me, you know, how to work as a team. Teachers came in and evaluated us. We practiced, and there were some people from the Yorktown Victory Center who came and evaluated us as well on what we should have more of or what we should have less of. And it was really important to get different views from people because we understood, you know, oh, this is what they want. This is what we should be doing. We should add more, and it just turned out great. Okay. What kinds of things did you change? Interaction with the crowd or um, whoever we're presenting to, first of all. We wanted hands-on things and, you know, like, take out a dollar bill. Guess what? George Washington's on it or something right. like that. To, um, you know, help the people connect with what we're presenting so that they feel as passionate as we are about the project. Challenges, probably time, um, so many ideas. It was hard as a group to find out what we wanted to do and what we didn't want to do because we all just were flowing with so many great ideas of things to do and things to talk about. But, um, and the speaking in front of people, especially in the French, we had to memorize it. And it's really hard to memorize something in a different language. 
but we found out that if you understand what you're saying, sometimes it's easier to say it because you're like, oh, I know what I'm saying, so maybe I can figure out in French if I forget. <laughs> we learned what to, to do next time and what not to do with those challenges because without them, I think we all learned so many skills that we will definitely need for high school. Um, what I'm saying is Washington and Martha Dandridge Custis got married when they were 27 on, let me see, in January of 1970 something, wait, I don't know, but only three weeks after they met. About 17. 17. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Washington a épousé Martha Dandridge Custis à 27 ans le 6 janvier 1759. So 1759. <laughs> um, après seulement trois semaines, which means after three weeks of meeting. And also, Martha had children, but she didn't have any children with Washington. So when you did your exhibit, did you speak in English and in French? Yes, because um, some things, you know, we did have people in the audience who didn't know French, <laughs> so um, we did need to translate or just speak in English. But, you know, we had a little quiz at the end, and it was cool because mm -hmm. we said it in both English and French so that the French students could answer as well. When you're in class, you know, I feel you learn the stuff, but sometimes it's not like you want to learn, learn the stuff, and it was, it pulled you in, it really did, it pulled you in, so I did think that we learned way more than I would have if we were just in a normal class. Absolutely priceless. <laughs> and that's in her own words, um, no scripting there, and uh, so just really wanted you to see an example of how our children reflect on the work that we're doing, and it is very meaningful to them. So at this time, I'd like to um, thank you and offer any questions that you might have. You mean that on Martha, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was tremendous. Now that she, what grade is? is Claire that? is in eighth grade. She's going to ninth grade. Excuse me, she's in ninth grade now. That's yes. Amazing. Interesting how she corrected herself. Mm -hmm. French and French. Yeah. Yeah. The students are very impressive. I attended the uh, transformative learning projects going on in Mr. Neely's uh, Grafton math class. And I always wondered, well, how do you uh, have transformative learning in math? I mean, you think about history, English, science, but how do you do that in math? And I was so impressed with what the teacher had the students doing. They were problem solving. They were using all kinds of math and geometry, algebra. And if they thought, oh, I'm going to prove this, and then they ran into a stumbling block. They tried to figure out how they could overcome that, and uh, they did a wonderful job. And along those same lines with the interviewing mm -hmm. and talking to experts in the field in terms of architects or engineers, um, I think some even talked to with, with our own um, James Lash that we're doing transportation. I'm not sure mm -hmm. if we had others that connected with Mr. Mm -hmm. Shearhart in terms of um, other aspects as well. And I like the fact that we as a board, every time we see a presentation at a board meeting, a lot of them are the transformative projects that the students have worked on. And we always ask the question, how do you share that to the other buildings? And now you all have that clearinghouse or that... Um, Repository. The, yeah, that, <laughs> that literally, literally just, they can just be dumped in there, piled in there, and, and teachers from all over the division can access and pull those and use those. And um, wonderful. Just another great presentation. Thank you very much. Very nice. Thanks. Thank you, Skinner. Thank you. Alrighty. Wow. Um, that's all the fun stuff. Now we get to the other stuff, <laughs> which we have a policy reading. Uh, this is, we saw it earlier. This one's being accelerated. Um, it's under first reading this evening. And is there any changes from last time we saw it? No. We don't have any changes, correct, Mr. Dr. Carroll? Correct. Um, any questions about that policy at all from board members? Would you like to explain um, why we're changing the policy? Sure, Dr. Carroll. Uh, we want to be able to have flexibility when we're dealing with a division of this size. There will be opportunities sometimes when a uh, 
and we want to move a principal into a school and there may be a relationship of some sort with somebody else in the building and when that happens sometimes the person that's already there is very entrenched in the culture or has has their own uh, attributes or contributions to the school that we think by removing one of them actually is a detriment to the school therefore we want to bring this forward to give the uh, superintendent that kind of flexibility when we feel that we're in that type of situation but only with certain constraints in place and those are listed in the policy and uh, more specifically in the S reg that's attached the policy that prevented a family member from supervising um, a, a parent a child a brother a sister or an in-law was in place for a reason what safeguards does YCSD plan to implement to make sure that um, we're not causing problems by this well in the s reg you'll see that uh, things are being put in place there has to be a plan that is brought forward to the board so that they can see it we're most uh, most concerned usually about evaluation and so that would be handled with an assistant principal as opposed to the principal uh, there also if there was anything that was even more more so there's a direct line up to either uh, myself as a title IX officer or with the supervising director level so with elementary you know, Ms. Skinner and with uh, secondary Mr. Bladu. What about if a student has an issue with the teacher and the parent does not feel comfortable approaching the principal because of a family relationship? Then they can they can uh, you know address that with the school you know school board offices and uh, that would be the purview of the level director or the HR director. And if I can remember correctly, this would only be something that would be exercised if there was a unanimous decision that the superintendent brought to the board this is a circumstance this is the situation this is what we're dealing with and it would require a unanimous decision from the school board all five of us would have to agree and only after the superintendent deemed that it was detrimental to the school to remove that person so um, this is not something that would be uh, often at all this so that you know those safeguards would only be put in place when we felt like this would just be a detriment to that organizational unit in the division all right any other questions all right that policy will come back to us at our next regular scheduled meeting for second reading and action and approval um the next item is report of the superintendent thank you mr Manfred. i just have three um three points tonight one i wanted to um lift up our the leadership in our school division we had a leadership academy this past wednesday and thursday and i appreciate um board members attending um that event that included a hundred leaders in ycsd including principals assistant principals and other division leaders uh, the theme of the event was one team one mission um, and we really had a, an, a wonderful time to dive into our mission statement um, and we also created leadership ideals during the school year which culminated the leadership academy so um, we tasked each school team and division um, department to dive into the mission statement and also look at the leadership ideals and what are some action steps that they can that they can put forth moving um, moving their school forward and making sure that we're focusing on all of the right things um, academy participants engaged in uh, leadership seminars on numerous topics as well as participated in roundtable discussions in an ed camp format which is driven by the participants uh, in the session which is a wonderful way for professional development to occur um, we concluded the two days with a team building activity I, and you had a good example of that this evening with the little libraries um, we have 15 little libraries we put all of our um, leaders in five to six person teams and they they painted those and designed those uh, little libraries so we're going to encourage reading in our community it was a wonderful service project for us to um, to, to participate in um, and we're going to take those out in the communities at, at multiple sites throughout the community so really proud of our of our group and the leadership academy i think everyone left inspired and really um, focused on where we're headed um, the next item i wanted to just briefly touch on i've had a wonderful opportunity to connect with our new county administrator uh, mr neil morgan uh, it hasn't just been once i've met with him multiple times um, last week had the wonderful opportunity of touring some schools with him so i took him by grafton the grafton complex um, york high school york l uh, and york middle school so he can get a sense of our not only our facilities but also he got to meet some of our principals and assistant principals while we we're there so i'm really looking forward to uh, working with him and um, moving forward um, for the school year 
And last but not least, uh, the VDOE will release our st the statewide and division and school pass rates tomorrow. So there'll be a news release tomorrow, so they will be public tomorrow. We're extremely excited to share our results to the board at the next work session in September. Um, and that was it. That's my last item. So this is my, that's the superintendent's report for this evening. Right. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking. Just piggyback on that. Uh, Neil Morgan has contacted all the board members and set up individual appointments with all of us, too, which I thought was really, really great of him to do. So, uh, of course, it's, it's um, some good input coming. I mean, just people are really in, enjoying to get to know him as, um, and the way he's connecting with the community is pretty awesome. Um, and the way he y'all are meeting on a regular basis too um i just want to mention i know cindy was there day one for the leadership um academy i was still doing my professional development but i was able to make it by there the next day and um the excitement that was going on was um just incredible and then to see all that excitement funneled into we're going to paint this little <laughs> library and I figure, okay, we're going to see paint fights. We're going to see people painting each other. We're going, to, we're going to see just, and oh my gosh, I saw talent come out in people mm -hmm. I've known for years. And I'm standing there going, wow, okay, you play an instrument, but now you also have a painting ability. Mm -hmm. um, it was it was pretty incredible. Yeah. So I really appreciated the fact that I um, got to see that. And when those things hit the community, and that numbers, I mean, we got like three or four of them floating around, but 15 are going to hit mm -hmm. the community, probably more. As we, they're amazing too when you yeah. see them. You know, you go into communities and you see these um, different, you know, art objects. I think there's some down the waterfront right now that just seem to pop up sometimes <coughs> and they have a theme behind them. I think York County is going to be little libraries. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seaford's done lead something that's mm -hmm. really going to make an awesome uh, appearance and people are going to start paying attention to them. I think the phone's going to start ringing going, oh, we want to sponsor one. We want to sponsor one. I think we'll see more and more. Well, and then you have 100, 100 leaders bringing their own books to fill them as exactly. well. So it was, it was a wonderful activity. So Might be a dare one pop up here soon. Maybe. Maybe. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? Actually, I'd like to bring up something. The Center for Disease Control last week joined the Academy of American Pediatrics and called for school divisions to have later start times for secondary, for middle school and high school. We had talked about this two years ago we tabled it last year when dr williams resigned and we knew we would need to um start a superintendent search then we wanted to give dr shandor a transition period before um readdressing the school start time issue eight three minutes after eight o'clock is the average start time for secondary schools in the nation that's 43 minutes later than ycsd High schoolers go to school. They start at 7.20, 43 minutes earlier than the average time. Uh, we, are, we have the earliest start time in the state and the nation. And I would like for us to renew our conversation about school start times. I'd like to know how the high school kids feel as part of the uh, uh, surveys. Sort of thing I, that would be really interesting i think it would be good to have a task force of parents students mm -hmm. stakeholders have town hall forums and bring the uh, experts mm -hmm. in because there is so much medical research and we have doctors and um a neurologist here who have been on the forefront of that research mm -hmm. and uh have town hall forums surveys I, I would really like to get the dialogue started i think we'll Probably what I would suggest then is I know we got tabled um, mainly because of the superintendent search. So if we were going to do this and do it right to restart something and have discussions would be to add it to the agenda at some point at a work session, bring it to the table um, for discussion as a board, see what direction the board wants to go. Um, I'm like <laughs> with Robbie, it's like, like uh, how ask the high schoolers what do they want you know and um and then move it from there i mean put it back on to find out the board is a unanimous decision to or a decision as a board as a whole to move it to the next step i guess but it would be a work session item i believe so i'm trying to think what month would be good to add it as an agenda item go to september we're going to get the information on testing I'll talk with the superintendent and see what month might be 
a good month to add it so we can discuss it as a board. Yeah, I'd like to do some research on the other school divisions as well, especially the ones who've gone through this, because any time that you make a, or you start researching change in a in school division, you certainly want to talk to those superintendents and those teams, because certainly they, they, they made, um, uh, sometimes you make mistakes as you go through so what did they learn from mm -hmm. it and then how can we improve our practice for you know we're, this is a, a big scope so we want to make sure we're looking at every facet mm -hmm. of it so um, sounds good okay so thank you for the conversation about moving it to uh, yeah, work we'll session find, agenda we'll, yeah we'll just find what month whether it's gonna be um, October you know, to September it's gonna be tied up and um, start a school but October might be the work session mm -hmm. to bring it to a discussion to, to find it the budget right well I mean we got yeah, we need to get it earlier than later, and um, but I think the, we need to make sure Ms. Haywood is here and have a discussion as a board for next steps. Super, thank you. Sounds good, thank you. Anything else, Mr. Mentor? No, sir, I'm good. All right, in that case, we're adjourned. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.